Hey everybody, I'm out here with park ranger Stephen Rector. He's going to give us a little program update for the spring and summer. Thanks for being on the show today, Steve. I know you're really busy. Yeah, it's okay. No problem. <laughs> so can you explain to me how our shelters are different than what they've been in the past? Yeah, in the past, you were able to call our office and make reservations over the telephone uh, with Miss Betty or with our weekend attendants. And generally, we kind of started that the first business day of January, and you could make reservations all year long. Uh, this year, we actually made a change. We moved our shelters from being able to make the reservations up front with Miss Betty, with our park attendant, I'm sorry, with our visitor center attendant. And we moved those shelters over to our contractors that are running the recreation.gov website. So, long story short, the way that you now make reservations for shelters is by calling either 877-444-6777 or you go on our website www.recreation.gov. Those reservations can be made seven days a week, 24 hours a day online on okay. that website. So we do have a few rules with our reservations for the shelters. Um, the first is they must be made at least six days in advance of your arrival date. Okay. And that's to give our contractors, the East O&M contractors, time to prep the shelter, uh, make sure that it's clean and ready for whoever has made the reservation. And okay. then you can make those reservations up to six months in advance. So that means that if you wanted to have a party in the summer, you can reserve it in the winter. Yeah, you, the would, year before. you would be able to reserve that up to six months in advance. Okay. So we do have seasons, though, on our shelters. They're not available for reservation every single day all year long. Okay. So our season this year is going to run May 11th until the third Saturday of October, and I just forgot what the day of the week that is, <laughs> but you can make reservations now for most of our shelters all the way through that third Saturday of October, okay. with a couple of exceptions. The two shelters at Earl Cook and the shelter at Rocky Point, those are only eligible for reservation through Labor Day, September 2nd, 2019. Okay. Uh, and that is because the swim areas at Earl Cook and Rocky Point close on those days. Okay. Um, but the rest of the shelters, Eagle View, Hardley Creek, VZ Creek, uh, let's see, Horace King, uh, Yellow Jacket, Long Cane, and McGee Bridge, I believe I got them all that way, uh, <laughs> runs through uh, third Saturday of October. All right. And so this is actually the same website that you can reserve campsites on as well. So it kind of makes it more streamlined for Absolute, everybody. Absolutely. It's the same telephone number, 877-444-6777, and it is the same website. So it is the recreation.gov website and it is that team that will handle the reservations for us for the shelters. And now that we've moved to that reservation site, we, we do not accept any reservations over the telephone at our office. You're always more than welcome to call our office if you need some additional guidance or information, but we will direct you to those two outlets to, to make the reservations. All right, and so also when you go reserve a shelter, you're able to see if it's available at another time, you can see what's available currently. And so that I think that is a good way for people to just visually see what's available. Absolutely, and then on a Friday or Saturday, if you are interested in using a shelter without a reservation, on a Saturday or Sunday, you would be able to go onto that website, kind of look to see if the shelter is reserved. If it's not reserved, it's available on a first come, first serve basis. So it's just, if you're there, you can use it. Absolutely. Okay. So if it's not reserved, it is available for first come, first serve reservations or first come, first serve arrivals. What I will say though, is that, that you have to be careful. We do not permit you to just bring in picnic supplies and set them on a picnic table and walk away. Yeah, you have uh, to be there. You, you need to stay there at that shelter if you plan on occupying it. We have no idea what is uh, new picnic supplies for today and what is left over from yesterday. Right. So if you bring stuff in and you leave it there and walk away, uh, we may assume that that was left from yesterday and right. we need to clean that up and prepare it for today. Yeah. So you may come back to find all that stuff <laughs> gone because we just shelter. assumed that it was left from yesterday. So right. if you're going to come into a shelter on a first come first serve basis and you want to get here early in the morning so that the rest of your family can come in the afternoon, folks really need to keep someone there at okay. the shelter with, with their whatever items that they have brought with them. Okay. Well, thank you. That's good to know for the summer. And also, so 
Upcoming very soon, we're, our beaches are going to be opening. How many beaches do we have here? Yeah, so we have three designated swim areas and those open for business May 11th and will stay open through Labor Day. So they will okay. close for the season at 9 p.m. On, on Labor Day Monday. Okay. Uh, those three swim areas, we have two that are in Georgia and one in Alabama. Over in Alabama is Rocky Point Recreation Area. And then here in Georgia, we have Earl Cook Recreation Area and the Yellow Jacket Recreation Area. Okay. And so those three areas, they operate on the same schedule. It's all Eastern time. The swim areas open at 10 a.m. and they close at 9 p.m. Okay, and is there an entry fee to get in the beaches? So there is a day use fee at each one of those areas and it is $5 per car. So at each one of those areas, you will come to a gatehouse. <clears throat> the gatehouse is not staffed. Uh, volunteers are operating these three areas for us. Okay. You will come to a gatehouse that's not staffed, but right in front of the gatehouse or very near to it, you should see a brown self-serve pay station. Okay. And it will have instructions on how to pull an envelope out of the pay station, uh, put $5 in there, and hang the receipt on your rear view mirror in your vehicle. We would prefer it to be on the rear view mirror. We understand that doesn't always work. So uh, somewhere that it's easy to see as we go by. Okay. So if you have though one of our federal recreation passes, a lot of times they're referred to as the senior pass or the access pass, uh, those passes, uh, you don't have to pay the additional five dollars okay just hang those passes on your mirror for us to see but you have to hang those passes on the mirror or display them in order for that to qualify you all right all right and do you have any special rules for any of the beaches that we need to be aware of yes yeah, so at at yellow jacket swim area a, a couple of things first off it's a relatively small park but very popular so it fills up very quickly right uh, we only have 115 parking spaces in, in that park so if you're going to come out there on a holiday you need to get out there early. Uh, once you once you come in there, uh, just because you have been allowed entry doesn't mean that uh, family members and friends that come four, five, six hours later will be able to get in. Once we reach capacity, that is it. We do not allow any additional cars into that park, and that's okay. Yellow Jacket Beach. All right. There are also there is no pets allowed at Yellow Jacket Beach. It's a very small beach. That's the only one that we have that no pets are allowed at. All right. No pets allowed past the gate. And no alcohol there at Yellow Jacket Beach. Okay. Um, all of the beaches, no glass on the beach, no pets on the beach, um, and that applies to Earl Cook and Rocky Point as well. Okay, and so I know there's, is there, I know there's certain reasons that we encourage people to go to the beach areas rather than just swimming anywhere in the lake. Do you think that, is there any certain reasons that you can tell us? Yeah, so, so those, those swim areas, the designated swim areas at Earl Cook, Rocky Point, and Yellow Jacket are inspected well before the swim areas open. And so what we're inspecting for is any holes, any drop-offs, any big slopes, uh, anything right. that will cut you, hurt you, grab you, and hold you underwater. Mm -hmm. And so we have brought in a lot of sand over the years. We have built a nice sloped sandy area that goes all the way out to, and we have a floating yellow boom line to designate the swim area. It goes okay. all the way out to the, the floating yellow boom in the water. And so those areas meet certain standards as far as what slope that sand is at, that there are no drop-offs, that there are no holes for people to fall into okay. as they take a step forward. And there's also no debris on the, on the lake bottom right. in that area. So there won't be any large trees, there won't be any stumps, uh, there won't be any cables underneath there. Okay. All right, and that's, I think that's kind of goes with the theme of our show is water safety. So oh, we absolutely. encourage people to go to the beaches because we know they're safe there. And we've done a lot to, in, to ensure that they're safe for the summer. Absolutely. So, yep. And, and if you come to those designated swim areas, Earl Cook, Rocky Point, Yellow Jacket, um, we make sure that there are throw rings out on the swim beaches. Should there be a problem, grab one of those orange throw rings, toss it out there. But we also have a life jacket loaner stations right there mm -hmm. at the gatehouse. If you need to borrow a life jacket, stop, pull off the side right. of the road, grab a life jacket, make sure it fits right, uh, and then head on down to the beach and have some fun. All right. Well, thank you for being on the show today. It was my pleasure. All right.